What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Creative Truth. Uh, I'm your co-host, Raz. And I'm Tyler. And today we're going to talk about how to get clients for creative professionals. This is actually a question that came to us uh, in a Facebook group, the Independent Video Creators Network. And uh, we ran a little poll just to see what people are having a problem doing uh, in their video and creative professions. Uh, let's give let's give everyone a quick little background on what we do and like how finding clients is important to what we do. Yeah. Um, so I do podcasting, uh, podcasting, live streaming. What you're watching now, I do like, with multiple cameras. I do uh, any kind of creative work that's really not video production, uh, and Tyler does the video production. Yep. Uh, side of this but we also like so the hard part about that is it's mostly creative work and it's mostly ideas so most creatives we just get stuck in our head versus out there on the you know with being a salesman and being a creative professional kind of two opposite sides of the spectrum so it's really important to be able to find clients yeah you think you can just shoot a couple of things and put them up on your Facebook page or whatever and then all of a sudden people are going to be calling you off the hook yeah um but it doesn't always work like that. Uh, but we've got some tips for you today to basically help that process along. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Do you want to start out with your first point? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I'll start. Okay. Um, so my let me look it up. first point is you got to get face-to-face -face with people. Uh, you know, having a, a thousand Instagram followers and one video that goes viral is not going to get you the amount of clients you're looking for. It might get you one or two, but it's not going to get you a steady stream of clients. You have to get outside, get off the computer, stop editing, go to a networking event, and get face-to-face -to -face with somebody. Um, that's the only way, really, to get a new client because people have to, you know, people have to get a feel for you. They have to, um, you know, understand your sense of humor. They have to know you, like you, and trust you. That's what every salesperson says. Um, so you have to get face to face with people. There's an energy there and you'll be able to bounce your energy off of another person's energy. And you'll be able to tell if you can work with this person, um, oh, yeah. even if you think they'll be an ideal client, they might not, you know, saying they might be, you know, have stinky breath or something. You know, say you just don't want to you just don't want to work with, them, you know, for any reason. And you, but you're not going to understand that unless you're face to face with the person. Yeah. And you mentioned Instagram to uh, different platforms and things that you're placing your creative energy into in hopes for a return, they're going to have different returns. And Instagram is, uh, by the numbers, mm. going to have a lower return. You never know. Somebody might DM you and, and be like, hey, I'm looking for a video in the area. But more than likely, it's going to be other video creators mm. on, on Instagram specifically. Mm -hmm. So if you're like definitely limited in, in your time like we all are, mm -hmm. your energy is maybe better spent in other places uh, yeah. if you're focused on getting clients specifically. That's right. Yeah. And my my advice, number my first advice would be to drop the phone, drop the camera, and go somewhere and get in front of somebody. Get in front of a bunch of people and just find a few people that you can really connect with. That's the best way to get a client. Um, my my main my main and first piece of advice, and I'll give a little background. I'm, I, uh, right now I'm a full-time salaried videographer which is really cool because <laughs> i don't have to worry about finding clients or or uh you know selling um or balancing the the schedule as much as i would if i was independent now i i did work for myself independently for two years doing wedding and corporate video um so i've done it i you know i actually uh the reason we wanted to talk about this subject today is because both of us agree, like, we don't really have a problem finding clients. Mm -hmm. Like, we've got more work than we can handle. But when when we put this question out there, that was, like, the number one response is that people want to learn how to get more clients and reach new clients. Um, so, so for me, your past performance is going to be a big selling point for people. And it goes back to that building trust. And that is, uh, you know, is that a... A demo reel is it a portfolio of work is it an instagram account that you can send to people is it a weebly site you know that's free is it a google site um 
there's not really one right answer, but you need to have some body of work or some work samples to show future clients or potential clients. Um, and like maybe you take Therese's approach and you go up and you talk to somebody that you've never met before. Well, then what? You gotta have somewhere to like to send them. You gotta mm -hmm. say, hey, check out my work on my website at you know tyleredick.com or podonthego.com. Um, or you can say, check out my Instagram uh, feed. If you're a graphic designer, um, there's, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a bunch of tools to basically create your portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, Behance. So Behance, yes, exactly. So you gotta have somewhere to guide people's uh, attention. And uh, if you're not familiar with the marketing background, that is another touch point or a step in the in what people call the sales funnel. Um, so basically, you've interacted with them. Now you guide them to your reel or your portfolio, or you send them your your the link to your reel, which is on your your Vimeo account, uh, and you've got something to show them. And then now you've met them; they know whether you know mm -hmm. your personalities are cohesive and what your vision. You know, if your visions align for what the what they're looking for and what you're able to create, and then they see your work, and uh, you're just one step closer to, you know, landing that job or mm -hmm. landing that gig. Um, so having having a portfolio or a reel is super important, specific to what you want to do. If you want to do real estate photography or animation or wedding wedding films or uh, you know, you just want to focus on post production or color grading or podcasting or live streaming or graphic design or web development. You got to have a reel or a portfolio. Um, if you're in college now, make that like your goal for mm -hmm. the time you graduate. Um, and I'm a I'm a college graduate. I actually have two college degrees, <laughs> but I'm still gonna say this: your reel or your portfolio is more important than that line on your resume, because if you're working in a visual field, you better be able to have the visuals to back it up. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. It's more so what you do than what you, than what you know. Sure. That's not, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. But yeah. Um, yeah. So my next point, next point is, um, so like find a way to get people a freebie or find a way to help people first. Um, and that doesn't mean, you know, like, so there's a difference between giving back and being used. So you don't want to get used by people and organizations and they say, I'll pay you $100 for a day of work. Like, don't get used, you know what I'm saying? But you can give something away for free. Like, so if somebody, if you're part of it, if you see an organization that needs help that you believe in and you want to um, help that organization to, you know, look better, whether it's, creating a better logo, creating a better website, uh, you can help them. And then somewhere in there, if you do great work, number one, you can add that to your demo reel. Number two, you're going to meet some really cool people uh, who can refer you to other people. So you know, so find a way to give a freebie. So here's what, an example of what I did. So I moved to Savannah and met a few people by volunteering and giving back that way. And then they recommended I join uh, this new radio station that just opened up at Savannah Community Radio Station. So from giving back by volunteering at a local organization that's in the tech world, and that led me to a radio show. So I started doing that twice a week, interviewing local small business owners before I even had a business. And that gave me a chance to give really cool people in the community free marketing and free promotion for their events. Through that, I met so many people in the city, you know, being here for one year, two years, and I know, and I'm like, I'm able to make things happen uh, where other people couldn't do what I can do just because I gave back first. And from that also, I, I get so many clients over and over and over. I have a couple marketing companies who use me for all of their video and all of their uh, podcasting and all of their live streaming, you know? So just find a way to give a freebie and then don't get used, but give that freebie. And then somewhere down the line, you know, you'll get something back. If you're if you can close people, you know, if you're consistent and upfront about that. I have a couple, I mean, I, uh, most recently uh, with the uh, insurance company I'm working with, mm -hmm. I cut a 60 second promo video that kind of shows 
what the finished product would look like mm -hmm. um, completely, you know, for free as like something upfront before I got paid. And then with my, my most recent wedding client, who's actually a coworker of mine and a, a friend, mm -hmm. um, rather than discounting her and giving her like the friend rate, mm -hmm. I made her pay full price. But then she's like, oh, I want a rehearsal dinner slideshow. And so I delivered that for free mm. and upfront, you know, before everything, before the wedding and everything. And uh, so it's not like I discounted the quality or like what I got out of it. But she like I didn't promise that originally. And then I delivered extra. Mm. So it goes back into like you under promise and you over deliver mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. Yep. So you don't you don't have to give away your work for free. You can use it as a way to basically open the door. Right. Right. And yeah, and there's a difference between um, giving away a full promotional package, branding package, and doing a series for a company for free for months, which I did. <laughs> which was not smart. <laughs> well, we all, that's how we learn, right? That's right. You, yeah. get, you get screwed well, yeah, twice. Yeah, so don't do like, it. That's one, right. Once you're like, okay, I got to figure out, like, <laughs> maybe next time I put, you know, demo or right. whatever. Exactly. Across yeah. the screen. That versus a 30 second promotional video. You right. know, like, that's. That's easy for us to do. We can get some stock video, take one shot of, you know, saying the client or CEO saying what their promotion is, and you can put something together really quick. So that's when I say freebie, that's what I mean is do something for free or do something that's going to help you and help them. So just just think about the different options you have. Next point. Yep. So uh, my next thing is something called social proof. But what that really means is you want other people to shout your name from the rooftops you want other people to say you gotta talk to tyler you gotta talk to raz um he's he's the guy uh for video production in this town or you know whatever whatever you do that's a creative venture uh and uh that could be in the form of actual referrals and um people sending clients or potential clients or connections your way or it could be as simple as um, reviews, mm -hmm. reviews on uh, on on your Google listing, Google My Business listing, and we're gonna. I'm I, another point I have is searchability, so we'll get we'll come back to this. It could be on your Facebook page. It could be an actual testimonial on your website. Um, but having that, you know, it may like feel kind of like cheesy and contrived, but having other somebody else vouch for you and speak on your behalf is so much more authentic and it actually like i don't know the psychology behind it but it mm. it, ha it has more weight and impact to it than just saying like we're number one in savannah mm -hmm. or we're number one in you know the number one wedding photography company or whatever you know everyone can make you know the world's best cup of coffee <laughs> there's like a thousand world right. best cup of coffees in manhattan right. you know so uh, so having somebody else, whether it's a past client or, um, or a vendor that you've worked with, just like basically saying how, how good you are, how fast you are, or how good the quality of your work is, or how good you are at communication or whatever, um, having those reviews, are, they're going to, it's going to greatly, uh, improve your ability to land more gigs and reach more clients. Mm -hmm. well, I agree 100 um, percent. That's something I'm going to. So once I get a studio, I have an actual place to Google my business, you know, Important. That's, yeah, yeah, I'm, that's the first thing I'm going to do is start asking for reviews. Yeah. You know, um, I don't I don't know what the mindset is with it either, but there's definitely something there. And, and I don't know, it just goes back to word of mouth marketing, you know, you know, for a friend that, you know, uh, says they like a place, you're going to go try it. Yeah, these are like tried and true marketing methods, mm -hmm. but they're in like today's world. Mm -hmm. So a Google review might not have been there 15, 20 years ago. Right. But like the concept. Have, yeah, having that kind of thing, it used to probably be in a paper. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The newspaper. In the newspaper. Yep. Or a, a binder. Like if you're going to a sales, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You'd have, <laughs> Print you'd have yeah. In a sales binder. That's or right. Yeah, I've, I've done that before. Um, okay, so cool. So my last one um, is to think about the clients you currently have and find the people in there who are your biggest supporters and just cultivate those relationships a little bit more. 
uh, more so than the other people who are just one off. You know, like maybe this, you know, maybe this corporation gave you this three thousand dollar gig, but that's the only one they gave you. But so I wouldn't even cultivate that as much as I would the person who's constantly sending you more and more referrals and bringing more gigs, even if they're just, uh, you know, three, four, five hundred dollar gigs at a time. You know, just cultivate those relationships. Those those are your biggest supporters, and those are the people who uh, are singing your name uh, off the mountaintop. Uh, I'm I suck at these. Af- what are they called? Aphorisms? No. What are what are they called? Idioms. Or, idioms. Yeah, I suck at these yeah. idioms. Uh, but anyway, so cultivate those relationships. So um, a lot of my best clients are uh, marketing companies, PR companies, um, website developers. Uh, other videographers, you know, these are the people who are constantly wedding planners. They're constantly sending me referrals and new clients and suggestions and, you know, just bringing me in on uh, client meetings and stuff like that. Because PR, it's a lot of people who want to start a podcast and just don't know how. So they, they'll they bring me in to help coach or consult or record or produce whatever. So these are the relationships that I'm always cultivating, whether it's just sending them a message, sending them an email with, um, you know, some something I found that might be of interest to them in their industry, uh, whether it's introducing them to other people uh, who they want to know, uh, or just you know, just listening to them, just talking to them. Sometimes, not not always calling them about business or not always meeting with them about business, but just taking the time to ask them and talk to them about you know how's their family, how's work going, and just listening. So that's that's what I mean by cultivate the the people who are supporting you. You know, go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. Uh, just as like a little side note in addition to that um, everybody you got to remember that everybody's just looking out for their own business and that's just the nature of Mm -hmm. business so what you need to figure out is how you what you do can add value to to this connections business Mm -hmm. so raz mentioned that he works with a lot of marketing companies well these could be like marketing companies and pr firms that don't offer video production as a service, but they see the value in video production and maybe it's something they can sell to their clients as an, as an add on to the press releases or the website or whatever they're already doing. And, uh, you know, they're they're not going to trust you or the, you know, they don't trust anyone quickly because they're putting their name out there. But when you've got that relationship and that mutual trust and they know, like, if we sell this video, uh, Tyler or Therese is going to be able to produce and, and deliver something that's high quality, then now all of a sudden you're not even selling. You're not even out there selling. They're, they're the ones out selling for you. Mm-hmm. And you're basically creating value to their business because they're able to like provide more services and, and a higher quality overall product to their clients. So that's like win, 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 you know, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. that would, it could sound possible with that, that the relationship first. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, you have another one? I got, a, I got like a couple, but I'll kind of like just <laughs> smush them all together. Yeah, if right. you think of something, you, you can jump in. Okay, I have one more I thought of. It'll okay. be short. So, I'll, yeah, I'll do one and then and you can go back. that. But the thing is like this is like because of the way my career has gone, I studied video and then I went into marketing mm. and I marketed for a lot of other people and made a lot of people a lot of money. And, uh, you know, so I got the marketing background and now all of a sudden I'm back doing – on just video mm. but with all that other you know complementary mindset and skill set mm-hmm. and business sense um so i know like to me this this seems so simple and common sense but i know a lot of people are out there uh working in their business as mm-hmm. photographers or designers or whatever but they're not working on their business and like you're helping other people create the best brand imagery possible but like how does your brand look what's right. your web presence look like right nine times out of ten terrible yeah so you need to apply the same methods (laughs) to like your your own business that you would do to like your best client that's right like your your own business should be better like should have better photography or um design or whatever i keep Mm -hmm. listing like these examples of creative things but like if you're like and even if you're like a, a barber you should have a good haircut you know, yeah. you gotta yeah, be, you, you gotta be your brand definitely. and like embody yeah. your brand. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can't be a builder in a shack, living in a shack. Yeah. You know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, 
work work on your business, not in your business. As my like, you need to spend time working on your business. Um, the other thing is to just test, test different things. There's the old ways of marketing. Maybe it's direct mail. I'm not. I've never done it for my business. I've done it for other businesses, and it works for some places. It doesn't work for other. Create. Reach out to a design, designer or go on. What's that one? Um, Canva. Canva. Uh, thank you. You're reading my mind. We're like same wavelength. Yeah. Uh, you go on Canva. You design something. You send it to Vistaprint. It costs not that much money. You print 100 of them. You mail them out. This is a trial run. You see what happens and you record the results. And if that happens to work in your market for what you do, Great. I mean, there's probably not a lot of people doing that. So maybe that's something you could try um, for not a lot of money. It's a little bit of extra effort, but like that's what could make you stand out. When I was up in New York, I'm from upstate New York. I used to run the same Craigslist ad uh, on the Craigslist used to be free when you post a service. Then they made it five bucks a month. But it's your listings up there for five uh, for 30 days and it's searchable in any market. So I used to run an ad for uh, wedding videos and web development, and I would get one or two new leads a week uh, just from Craigslist alone. And so that's $5 for 30 days of advertising, which is like stupid cheap, mm -hmm. but because they actually charge some money, it eliminated all the people who just were there like spamming people, mm -hmm. which is great. And then it made me seem more legit because I was actually willing to pay a little bit of money. Right. So I ran this ad all the time. I kind of got a little arrogant. I came down to Savannah, I ran the ad, I, you know, copy paste the same one I had always done, nothing, <laughs> crickets. And I'm like, all right, I, tr I tr tested it again in a different category. And I actually went out to Atlanta, w you know, with my ad, I got two or three hits in Atlanta, Savannah, crickets, <laughs> nothing. So I don't know if people are like it's different. Yeah. Depending on your market. Like I said earlier, face to face, like face, you have to be face to face in certain markets, smaller markets. You know, larger markets, like I built a huge meetup when I lived in Chicago just from a whim, you know, and I tried the same thing in Savannah. It didn't work because people want to know you first. They're not going to waste their time, you know, saying on somebody they don't know. So it's like it's a very depending on your community. It can be a very family oriented. Who do you know? How do you know them type of thing versus just the Internet work? So if you're in a large market, like maybe face to face, face to face will always work, you know, especially in a large market. But maybe being getting a thousand followers on Instagram would be enough, you know, if you're in a larger market or a different market. Who knows? Um, the other thing I was going to say well, is the, that so the, well, just the point of that is just try new things and test it. Yeah, because there's no one tried and true answer. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and what I was going to say about your point about trying the old ways of marketing um, by like sending out postcards. So the postal service, and I learned this when I was a real estate agent, they have like this thing where if you send them and they'll give you all the details on their website. But if you send them a postcard in the exact sizes, then they'll just, and, they, and give them the right amount of postcards and they'll tell you how many. But anyway, you can just do it for cheaper and just do it on a route without putting everybody's name on it, basically. And they'll just say to current resident of, and they'll send it out on every route and it'll be like 10 cents per, per card. You know what I mean? So, or less than that, like a cent, a penny per card on that route. Anyway, so it's just, it's different. Why, like, why not try that? Sure. You know, if you're going to be doing YouTube ads and everything anyway. Um, the last point I was going to say that I thought of is, and I'll do it really quick. The When I, when I was an agent, I took sales training. And uh, everybody knows the golden rule to treat others how you want to be treated. But in sales, there's also the platinum rule. And, the, and that's to treat others how they want to be treated. So some clients, and this like when you're trying to get new clients you want to make sure in order to get new clients you want to make sure you're doing amazing work for your current clients and they'll refer you so to get new clients from your current clients you have to treat these people your current clients the way they want to be treated so some people want to just give you a simple you know give you a task and have you do it and get it back to them some people want to go through everything second by second and tell you make this edit at five minutes two seconds take this out you know and they'll go through a line you know frame by frame you know i saw an image pop up in here somewhere it shouldn't be there you know cut that out all that stuff you know the audio doesn't sound too good here take that out can you put this section here to the beginning so 
treat your client how they want to be treated and they'll they'll love you forever and continue to refer you and get new and better clients um so just just keep that in mind like some every client's different uh as you get more and more clients you'll be able to put people into different um you know stacks of types of clients but yeah for sure my lights bleep beeping so we'll speed it up okay um my last thing uh uh, is just talking about searchability and how are people finding you? And that's a very modern uh, approach to being found on the web. But s simple little tactic here, create a Google My Business listing. Just you can literally Google my business, you know, come up with Google My Business. I think it's business.google.com, something like that. You create a listing for your website. That's where you can funnel in your reviews. You can create a free web page there. You can embed a video and uh, it's gonna really help how you rank and how you pop out and you can do it for all of the different search terms in your market. Um, so just create your Google business listing because Google is the king of search mm -hmm. and uh, you need to be able to be found. Mm -hmm. I agree, yeah. And yeah, Google owns YouTube. So all that stuff goes together. Every, you know, the more we learn about YouTube, search engine optimization and Google, you know, anyway, it all goes together, so for sure. Um, cool, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, this week's episode of The Creative Truth is sponsored by T Associates, LLC. Uh, T Associates is a production company based out of Savannah, Georgia, specializing in wedding and corporate videos. We can be found on social media at T Associates or online at theTassociates.com. Cool. And the other sponsor is Podcast on the Go, podonthego.com. You can find us anywhere at Pod on the Go. Uh, we specialize in producing podcasts and launching them successfully. We specialize in live streaming sports and events and speaking engagements at conferences and all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, you can reach out to us at podonthego.com. To learn more about the creative truth, visit us on social media at We Create Truth or online at creative truth.com. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Um, so I thought about this yesterday and it stuck out to me because my wife's mad at me right now. <laughs> so, uh, but you have to like, so the moral of the story is uh, you have to go your own pace in life. You know, like, so for instance, have you ever been on the highway and you, this little souped up car, Mazda or Dodge Neon with a spoiler on the back and colored red with tins in the back and lowered down with the extra spoiler for no reason, uh, fender. Anyway, have you ever seen like, they just zoom by you, right? In traffic and five minutes later you guys end up at the same stoplight or five minutes later they're pulled over by the police or five minutes later you know they're in a car accident worst case scenario you know what I'm saying that's the same as life um and business and being a creative like you have to go your own pace like you'll get there and sooner or later like you know you could you could be the the red car speeding but something will happen man you, you'll be off the road and you'll you'll crash or the cops will pull you over because you're doing something illegal or you know what I'm saying you'll just like life will slow you down whether you want it to or not and you end up at a stop sign or a stoplight next to the same people you started with you know so just you have to go your own pace and just let i heard something else today like uh it was i was listening to a video by alan watts and it was like life is a a, a musical composition you know like you have to dance and smile while it's going on not at the end you know so just enjoy life go at your own pace and like Things, things will unfold for you. You know what I'm saying? More, you can't make life unfold. You just have to be in the moment and go at your own pace and, and live right now. Do your best right now. And if you can do that, do your best, then everything will work out. Yeah, if you're in that fast car too, like maybe you need that adrenaline rush. Yeah. You need things to be moving. You need your life to be quick, quick, quick. That's all good. But the person back there is able to like look around and enjoy the that's ride, right. you know. That's right. So it's not it's not there's not one right way to mm -hmm. do it. So absolutely, and it's right. great. Yeah. All right. So that's it. That's it for today's show. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you're in the Facebook group and if we answer any of your questions, thank you guys for answering the poll. Uh, if you have any other questions that uh, you want us to answer, or if you like the show, didn't like the show, let us know what we can do to change it. We're, we're creatives. Like we want always want to improve. So thank you guys for watching. I'm Raz. And I'm Tyler. And this has been The Creative Truth. Peace out.